Hello, welcome to Assembly Theory. I don't want you to get tired. Amen? I know that the tendency of getting tired because most of us are coming back from work is there. But the Lord is the God of strength. Amen? 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 I want you to just stand up and shout a glorious hallelujah unto God. Because this God is a God of power, a God of strength. God that satisfies the God that gives us joy, you know, and hope and faith. You know, now people get tired. If you don't have any hope, there's no reason to live again. But when there is hope, when there is hope, you will receive more strength. You will receive more comfort. You will be able to comfort yourself. I want you to shout to this God because as you shout this hallelujah, God is going to release an awesome strength. He's going to release His glorious power in your soul right now, in your life, that every confusion of mind will be gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. At the count of two, I want you to shout hallelujah three times. One, two, go. Oh, I say, 
clap it as if you are offering your hand. Remember that clap is another form of warfare. You know that you can clap and defeat the enemy. Only clapping. Praise the Lord. So I want you to clap as if you mean it, as if you know what you're doing. I want you to clap, give a hand offering unto the Lord. Can we do that again?
I want you to read verse 20 to 22. If you're there, you can just read it. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to I want to be specific on verse 22. These are the times that God decided to wipe everything in the, on the earth on the earth and only preserve Noah his family and all the things he has collected. And he made he made a covenant with Noah, praise God, and say now as the earth remained, so long as the earth is concerned, there's always there will be always a what seed time. Everybody say seed time. Seed time. Everybody say seed time. Seed time. And there is always there will be always a harvest time. There will always be a cold time. There will be always a heat time. There will always be a summer time. And there will always be a winter time. There will always be a day and what? A night. Seed time. And harvest time. It means that if you don't sow a seed, you cannot do what? But there's always a time for these things to happen. Now, which time is the seed time? Let me use this phrase in America. Which time is the seed time? When, when do you sow seed in America? Spring. Supposing you decide to sow that seed in winter. Praise the Lord. Suppose he said, you know what? I'm tired this time. I don't want any disturbance. Because I know when to sow my seed. And then in the winter, you begin to sow seed. What do you think will happen? Those seeds will not grow. Because the time has passed. Praise God. So there's always a time of seed sowing. So when harvest time comes, you'll be able to do what? Harvest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God began to make this declaration. He said, It will not cease any longer. There will always be a time of seed and a time of harvest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to go to Matthew chapter 13. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13. And I will ask somebody to read 3 to 11. Should you can read it for me. They were scorched. 
and because they had no roots, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let's go. To let him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The mystery of heaven. The mystery of heaven that's given unto you. Those seeds. Supposing you decided to sow the seed anyhow. Are you going to have any harvest? No, you decided to say, you know what? I'm too tired to bend down or to do go through the process. I just decided to fly the seed anyhow. Let me just in fact you decided to come in a separate actually they were sowing seed. And you come inside this place and said, I'm sowing the seed. You scatter it over here and then go home. And then during the harvest time, you decided to come to harvest it from the carpet. You know, I know that this place will never allow this seed to grow. And you just scatter it. And then you come back to harvest. Is it going to be possible? You will not be able to harvest anything. Now it means that we need knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. We need knowledge to be able to sow the seed properly. To be able to sow it in a ground that can produce. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We need knowledge. We need understanding. We also need skills to be able to do those things so that we will wait for the harvest. We need what? Knowledge. So that we will not, if you read the book, if you read the whole book of this, Matthew chapter 13, you will know that some people, Christ did not speak to them in a way that they will understand. He spoke to them in parables. Why? He said, in understanding that they will not understand. So that they will have knowledge of what I'm saying. But for you, it is given to know the mystery of what? The kingdom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For you, it is given the knowledge. It is given the understanding. God gave you the understanding, the knowledge, the skill to understand the mystery of the kingdom. Because not everybody do understand the mystery of the kingdom, the mystery of the seed soil is given to you. Because any any person can begin to own if, if you go, if you know, if I give you a seed, you know, seeds, and you decided that you are very, very hungry and decided to eat that seed. What's gonna happen? I know that most seeds are bitter, like mango seed. You cannot eat it. You can just are very hungry and you begin to yam mango seed. Begin to eat it. What's going to happen? You will spit it. In fact, even if you decided to eat it, it will throw your belly. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it means that if you don't have knowledge of the mystery of this kingdom, you will eat the seed.
And the same will be so bitter. Instead of giving you joy, it will bring what? Sorrow. It will bring problems. It might send you to the hospital after all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because you are so hungry. Because you lack knowledge. The Bible said in the book of Hosea chapter 4. What did he say there in verse 6? He said, my people do what? My people perish because of lack of knowledge, not because of Satan. I will say this. That Satan is not the problem. Because if Satan is so strong the way we think, he will not deceive you. I can only deceive the best. I can only try to deceive or pacify the person that is stronger than me. Praise God. Praise the Lord. If, the, if, if, if I'm strong, like I know I'm very, very stronger to compare to joy. I don't need to deceive joy to Peter. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the devil always come and play. What, the devil, what gives the devil chance is ignorant. Your ignorance. It gives him the, 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 the chance to play with your mind. When you are ignorant of things, he will capitalize on that and play very well. You know, the way I play, you know, I, don't know, I don't know how to play piano. You know, people that are very skillful in playing, he will play and play you very well. But not when you are knowledgeable. Praise the Lord. And that is the reason why we have gathered this day. That you may understand the mystery of what? The kingdom. So you don't eat your seed. The seed is meant to be what? So you sow, you sow seed. You don't eat it. No matter how hungry you are. If you eat your seed, it will cause problem. That's number one. And number two, your seed will never fool your belly. You will never cook seed. And, you know, when I was a child, my father, you know, we usually go to the farm. There's this corn. He, he always preserve some corn after the season. He just preserve some. And after a while, they will get so hard that you cannot, if you decide to roast it, you will be truly like stone because it's very hard. You will never enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One day I was so hungry, I took one and roasted it. I was eating it like stone. You'll be hearing the sound. If I couldn't finish one because it's not pleasing. It's, it's, it's not for eating. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what do I say? That it is very important for you to know, for you to understand these mysteries. So that you will not end up in problems. That's how problem multiplies. First of all, you eat the seed. And secondly, it will start hurting. The belly or your body anywhere. And then you will end up in the hospital. And then you will start calling for prayers. Now, you wouldn't have called for prayers if you did not eat the seed. Praise God. You wouldn't have gone to hospital if you don't eat the seed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to read somewhere. 
Ephesians chapter 3, 6 to 12. Remember, I said we need what? Knowledge. We need what? Knowledge. Are you there? Can they shout hallelujah? But the Gentiles, are you there? He said that the Gentiles, I mean, Paul was speaking, he said that the Gentiles should be fellow hires and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the intent, I want you to listen very carefully, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Anyone have NIV? You have any, any uh, uh, NIV translation? Anyone with NIV? Nobody. Praise God. Now, you have NIV. Okay, can read. Just read. Read for me 10, 11, and 12. Praise God. Verse 12. Have you finished? In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Praise God. Praise God. is that we that the intentions of God is that we will know the mystery of the kingdom. That we may be able to teach the principalities the rulers in heavenly places the manifold wisdom of God.
so that you'll be able to approach him in confidence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In what? Confidence and faith. Teaching the manifold wisdom of God to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. It's not just the evil principalities. The Bible didn't say evil principalities. I'm going to read another place. I specify the evil ones. But now you need to teach. You begin to you begin to find your way through by knowledge, by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God God's intention is not that you remain a baby forever. Because when you remain like that, you are prone to the bound. Even when you are loose, you don't know. The Bible says we shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? No, not set us. It is says set us free. The original translation of that is that the truth will do what? Make us, you know, some, trust, some people that wrote the Bible, they are not born again. I'm telling you, they can put anything there, but the original translation that I read said that you might know the truth, that the truth will do what? Make us free. It's not setting you free. There's a difference between setting a man free and making a man free. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, assuming a man is in prison and his papers to be released and be signed, but he didn't know. And the people that are holding him don't even know. But all his paperwork has been done that this man needs to go. What is going to happen to the man? He will remain in that prison. Praise the Lord. Amen. He has been made free, but he is what? Still in the prison. Yes. Do you understand it? He has been made free, but he's still in the prison. The process and everything has been done, but he need to be released. He need to. The moment he under, assuming he was he was made free five years ago, and he just realized it this year, when is he going to go? Now, praise God, praise God, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So that is why I say to you that. God has decided that you will teach the manifold wisdom of God to the heavenlies. You need to tell them that I am free. I don't need to be bound here. I am what? Free. You give me a chance to live. Right? Because if you don't know, you need to teach them that you are free. You have been made free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know if I don't know if you are understanding what I'm saying. God has set up all that you need. The seed has been given. God is not trying to. For instance, your seed. God is not trying to heal you. That's the problem we have. You are trying to gather enough faith. It's like you try to sit down and say, okay, I'm still gathering faith so that I will launch out and be free. That freedom has been given to you already. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That healing has been given to you already. The seed has been given. 
give it to you already. You're not looking for the seed. But you need to move according to the word of God. You need to move according to knowledge. For you to get things done, you have to have what? Knowledge. You need to teach the heavenly race that I am not among those that are ignorant. Those who know their God shall do what? Shall do what? Shall be strong and do exploit because you know you know what you are doing. You will not be held bound like any other person. The devil will not trick you and tell you that this seed don't show the seed or try to divert your mind so that you scatter the seed where it will not grow or try to mess you up. So that during harvest time, you will not be able to harvest. You need understanding. You need knowledge. You need to teach. You need to teach because that's the, that's the will of God. But you to begin to teach the heavenlies, the manifold wisdom of God. Because they are confused. You think it's a joke? They are what? Confused. That is the reason why Christ gave you the power. That's why if you read the book of Psalms chapter 27, when it said, O ye gates, do what? Lift up your head. Lift up your head. Because I am the king of glory. So they need to lift up their head. They, they cover their head because they don't know. So you need to teach them you need to teach them the manifold wisdom of God. The Bible says those things, those things, the mystery that God opened now, he has hid for a long time in God and decided that now I'm going to open this for you and me. So you have no reason to stay the same again. You need to, you need to grab this knowledge and begin to God. nothing has the ability to hold you down anymore. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. God has given all that it takes for you to move. For you to achieve whatever you want. According to God, this is this is his will, this is his intention that you will not be held anymore. You will not be held bound anymore. You begin to teach them the manifold wisdom of God. Because that is why you are called. I hope I have the right crowd. Are you, do you understand? Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't need to you don't need to stay and cry anymore. Or regret, you know, some of us sometimes you have the tendency to start regretting. Well, if I'm not a Christian now, oh, if you see my mates, this, this church thing, I don't know if it is working. It's because you don't understand. If you understand, you know that in your very street, you are the leader, you are the representative. You know, the way we gather here, we are the representatives. The house of bread. Have you ever watched the house of bread? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The house of rest. You are representing a soul. So that in your street will be no go area anymore. Hallelujah. Any street you come and live, all the witches will start packing. Anytime you come to a place, they will know. You know, we moved to a particular place. Well, you know, my wife was living in a place, in a particular place. Then when I came, we moved into another place. When I came, 
there, this was the man, you know, this should be my friend. I was buy things from him. All of a sudden, he turned against me. I didn't do anything. Praise the Lord. But I realized because every 12 o'clock, I would start praying. Every 12. In the afternoon, I would call my little boy and say, come. Turn off everything. It's time for prayer. So, he was... So I was wondering, what did I do to this man? Nothing was my friend. And I used to buy him something. So whenever I go to the shop, he would start making trouble. So I realized that it's because our spirit does not connect. He will see me coming, he will just throw his face the other way and move fast. Now, God will begin to show you things that are happening around the area. You know, in England they have a lot of witches. I don't know if you know. Witches that wear suit, dress properly. And they don't hide it anymore. Like I was telling people on Sunday, that people are doing their degrees in witches. Witchcraft and wizardry. Diploma, PhD, and PhD. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And some are beginning to sell their souls, as I told us. Go to the internet to sell your soul. And they pay you every month. To make sure that you are doing what you say. If you are a whore, if you are a drunkard, if you are this, if you are that, if you take drugs, you have to be doing it. Somebody has to come and supervise you and ensure that you are doing those things. So every month you get your money. They pay you for being to, to do those things. If you are because you have to fill the form to everything, every month they will push money into your account. Maybe five hundred pounds, one thousand, depending on the gratitude, sorry, on the magnitude of the sin, the pain, the sin you are committing. How deep it is, you get more money. And somebody has to be assigned to you to check on you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So what am I saying? That it is time not to play anymore. Don't play with knowledge. You need knowledge. You need to understand this mystery. So that those seeds will not be a problem to you anymore. And the seed I'm talking about is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to understand this word. You need to know what you are doing. Because the devil is out. Some of the demons that have never visited here, this earth has been released. And they are all over the place. Likewise, some angels that have never been seen yet have been released also. So there's a war. There's, it's no more business as usual. There's a war going on. You need to know that God did not call you. Know, God was speaking to me one day. He said, I didn't call you just like a pastor. And I call you like a soldier. He said, soldier of the Lord. You need to understand that there is a fight. That this place looks quiet does not mean that there is no war going on. Praise the Lord. You need to have that knowledge. You need to understand it. So that you will war yourself through. You will fight through. There is no war at ease in Zion. No. You need to do what? You need to fight. You need to war. Simple thing is not easy. They are no more simple. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I was telling someone, I said, you need to begin to sow this seed. You need to understand that simple things, you want to get married. This, there was a time it was as easy as anything. Uh -huh. You just get married. Uh -huh. And just be married. 
That's it. But it is no more. You need to fight. You need to do what? You need to, you need to watch. You need to be worried until God will tell you this. The heaven is there. You will see the heaven.
Go to me that he's not he's not ready to take it yet. It's okay, so this man shouldn't be suffering like that. He's not ready to take him, then you let it go. And I start praying every 12 o'clock. In fact, this particular day I was praying. I was praying and said to God, it's it's not his time. It is not his time to go. So release him from that. Let him because they said he was back bound. He couldn't turn except somebody turned him. Praise the Lord. I said, no, God, let the kind, let the kind of energy that I'm feeling around that place begin to move right now. Let it move and visit him wherever he is and get him up from that bed. Let him sit by himself. Let him get up from the bed by himself. On this prayer, when we finished praying, it was not up to three hours. I got a call. They were rejoicing on the background. Hey, they were not there. He just got up by himself. Amen. And sit by himself. And since then, he has been getting up by himself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What am I saying? But most things, you need a job. It's not simple anymore. Mm-hmm. Want to maintain your house? It's not easy. I'm telling you how the devil is so tricky. So tricky. You want to make sure that those things that are simple are no more simple. So you need to fight your way through. You need to pray. You know, you know, you need to, even when you're not, you know when you start praying. You need to pray until you start praying. Don't wait for somebody to push you. You need to start praying until you what? You start praying. You need to do this. It's no more just talking. You need to start employing all these principles for you to get through. Praise the Lord. That's where we're going to read Acts chapter 19, verse 20. I want to make a comment there. Acts chapter 19 and verse 20. The word of God. I can see. Can somebody read it quickly? Acts 19, verse 20. So mightily so mighty grew the word of God and prevailed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.